What up, everybody? Instruct the Beats back again here with our tape diagram unit. Today we are talking about a part whole model and when we use that for addition. So let's rip the tape off and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to explain the parts of a part whole model and construct one to solve an addition problem. So here we have the part whole model. Okay, and the part whole model visually shows the relationship of the different parts to the whole. Okay, and just like in our introduction to tape diagrams, um, let's say we're talking about apples. So part A could be red apples, part B could be green apples, and part C could be yellow apples. So if you look at this, we're showing the relationship. We're clearly showing that seven is bigger than five. Okay, and it wasn't twice as big, but it was a little bit bigger than five, the part for part A. And then part B, or the green apples, and our fake word problem we're doing, okay, is bigger than two and you can kind of see the relationship between them and then also you can see how they can pair to the whole. So obviously our whole for this would be uh, 14, okay? And you can see that seven is, should be exactly half of 14, okay? Now my, I'm not exactly perfect in my drawing, but it should be, okay? And then you have five and two and so you can see that we have the parts, or sorry, we have the groups, okay? Or we can label what those parts are. So we have what the value of that part is and then we have the whole. So those are the pieces of our part whole model. Let's talk about when would you use this tape diagram? Because we know there's four tape diagrams if you've been with us through our playlist, okay? And you're gonna use a part whole model if you're given different parts and you wanna find the whole, right? So we gave you the red, the, uh, the green, and the yellow apples, and we were asking how many apples were in all. Or if you're giving the whole and you want to find the parts. And we're gonna talk about that next lesson. Um, so this lesson we're gonna really focus on when we're given the parts, and then we want to find the whole. So here's a non-word problem, right? And if you are a K2 teacher, you can start using these tape diagrams in your classroom without word problems and then when you transition into word problems it's going to be the same exact strategy because this is a great way to start showing the relationship between numbers okay and so uh, I'm drawing my part whole model all right here okay here we go try to make it nice and big right there okay I have five so let's just start with uh well I'm going to start with the biggest one first okay I'm going to use my community property um, and so let's say I have 10 right here okay I know five should be about half of 10, so I'm gonna make one about half the size. And then right here, I notice I'm in a little bit of trouble because nine should not be bigger than 10. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw one that's pretty close to 10. I'm gonna label, label it nine, and I'm gonna get my eraser and I'm gonna fix this, okay? Because one thing you really wanna focus on is making sure that the relationship between the numbers is being properly shown. So if you draw it too big, you can always just erase it. All right, so these are my different pieces. Now. A part whole model isn't going to help you solve, okay? You still have to be able to add. You have to have a strategy for adding whatever that is. If it's standard algorithm, uh, maybe you're counting on your fingers if you're a younger student, okay? Um, but, you know, obviously the answer would be 24. What a part whole model is going to do is it's going to show the relationship between the numbers. And then when you get into a word problem, it's going to make that transition easier. Uh, one thing I've seen younger students and young uh, and teachers of younger students do is instead of writing 10, okay, if they're just learning how to add and they, you're trying to show the relationship between them, they might give them 10 M&Ms and put 10 in this box, 5 in this box, 9 in this box, and then they could add them all up to help them find the total. So they're still doing the tape diagram, but they're doing it in a concrete way where it's actually helping them add as well. So a couple key thoughts we want you to take with you before we get into doing these with word problems. The first one is you need to show the correct relationship between the numbers. That's something really to focus on as you're teaching them or as you're doing them. Number two, you need to label the model correctly. Okay, so especially in a word problem, you need to make sure it's labeled and that's gonna be including using a question mark and I'll show you that in a second, um, but that question mark's gonna be so important as you get to multi-step questions and then as you start writing algebra equations from these, and then step number three, neatness. Okay, you have to be neat with these. Now, my handwriting is not very good, and I can still do these. So even if you have a student who has trouble with handwriting, okay, um, and, they, and they have trouble being neat, okay, and their parents have labeled them as something that's really not true, just made them, their parents feel better to have a label, okay, um, they can still do this. They just have to focus a little bit and be a little bit neater. Maybe you give them grid paper and you let them trace the lines so they can make it. Okay, I'm not saying that it has to be perfect, but it does have to be neat where you can read it. Your 10 can't be 30 times bigger than your five, okay? You have to kind of be able to see that relationship which leads us back to number one. So let's take a look 
at what this might look like for a word problem. So I'm going to do my sides check strategy. That's not a part of this lesson, but this is an awesome uh, word problem strategy. And then it's going to allow us to do the tape diagram right here when we get to the develop part. Um, but it's, if you don't know what this is, check out our song, check out our video on this. It's an awesome word problem strategy if you don't have one, and it's probably better than what you do, in my personal opinion. So my question said, how much money did she spend in all? So I'm starting with a statement, which is what S means. So Tammy spent blank dollars and all. What this allows me to do by writing my statement first is to go back and identify anything that's important. So it's talking about her spending money. I need to go back and look for anything about money. So she bought a watch for $7. She bought a purse for $15. And she bought an ice cream for $3. How much money did she spend in all? Now I'm circling this. I'm identifying anything about the statement and then any other keywords that might help me know what to do. So if I'm doing things in all, I annotate that with an addition sign, okay? And so now, because I know that I'm trying to bring things together to figure out how much money in all I spent, I'm doing a part whole model. So for my develop or draw a picture, I'm gonna draw a part whole model, okay, there we go. And I know that I did a watch, a purse, and ice cream. So I know that the watch, the, sorry, the purse was the biggest part, okay? So here we go, put a P for purse and put my 15 there. I know I had a watch for seven dollars. There we go. Put a watch for seven dollars, and then I had an ice cream for three. So now I've labeled it, but my question mark is going to go where the answer is going to be. So for my tape diagram, I know that I they gave me the three different parts, and I'm looking for the whole. So my question mark is going to be down here. Now, as you get into multi-step questions, it's going to be really important that you have that question mark because sometimes you're going to be solving two or three different steps, but you're not done until you find the number that's represented by this question mark. Now, if you have a high student or someone that you want to start teaching these algebra concepts to, you can now take it, I call it take it off the model or take it off the tape diagram, and you can write an algebra equation, right? So I have 15 plus 7 plus 3, and that's going to equal x your X could be your question mark. And so you can start writing these algebra equations from the tape diagram. There's my equation, okay? Um, and then I just have to solve it. And again, you can teach them any different way you want to add. The tape diagram's just helping you develop the understanding of what's happening. All right, I have these three things I bought. What's the total? Um, and so obviously, you know, if you wanted to solve with the tape diagram, you could do 10, and then you wanna add your 15 to that, right? And your answer could be, 25. So that's one way to do it. If you want to set up the standard algorithm somewhere else, you could also do that, and that's totally fine. So the answer is she spent $25 in all. So I check it by writing it back in here. So you can see right here, I developed my understanding of what's happening. I didn't just use this keyword to know I was adding. I proved it by drawing a picture, and then I took it to algebra if you want to. That's an st extra step that you can, kind of like those yoga teachers that say, maybe you do this. Or maybe you try this, and then typically I fall over. So, All right, so here's a you try problem. Go ahead and pause the video. You're going to try to solve this. You can use the side strike strategy if you want. If not, you can just practice drawing your tape diagram and then push play to see how you did. So hopefully you just paused it, and the question says, there, are th uh, there were three dogs in a park, a Sheltie, a Yorkie, and a Pitbull. The Pitbull had 12 toys. The Sheltie and Yorkie each had four toys. How many toys did they have combined? So I'm gonna start my side check strategy again, okay? And my statement is going to say, they had blank toys combined. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna identify anything about toys or whoever the they were, right? And then any other key words that we've been teaching them. So there were three dogs in a park, okay? So I know there are three dogs, a Sheltie, Yorkie, Pitbull. The Pitbull had 12 toys. The Sheltie and Yorkie each had four toys, okay? How many toys did they have combined? Okay, I'm going to put a plus sign. Now, some of you are saying, okay, well, Mr. Instructor Beats, dude, you told me that we're trying to take them away from finding keywords. No, we're not trying to take them away from finding keywords. We're trying to teach them what those keywords actually mean. We're trying to conceptually draw the picture instead of just saying, oh, it's addition because they said combined. So we're not trying to take them away from finding keywords. We're trying to take them away from relying only and memorizing keywords to tell them what to do. So I did my statement. I've identified. I'm going to draw my tape diagram here. And I know that the pit bull had 12. All right. So I'll just uh, do 12. I don't know, 12 like that. I can always erase it if I make it messy. And then the Sheltie and Yorkie each had four. Okay. So I have my Sheltie had four. There we go. And then I had another group of four right here. 
perfect. And then I see that I drew it a little bit too long so I can just erase that. And then I wanted to combine all of those to figure out my total amount of toys. So my question mark would go right here, okay? So I've just developed my plan. Again, if you wanted to, you could have them practice writing the algebra equation. I don't always have them do this, but just to show you that next step, okay? And then all you have to do is solve it, right? So you can solve it right here if you want. You could do eight, and you could do 12 plus eight, right? And you could add that together and your answer would be they had 20 toys combined. So hopefully you could solve the question and get 20, right? But now hopefully you're understanding how the uh, tape diagram can help them visualize. And then check out our next lesson because what we're gonna talk about next lesson is when you have a hole and then you're missing one of those pieces. And that's always a difficult question for some students to figure out what to do. This makes it really, really easy. So here's what we want you to take with you. Part whole models can be used to help students understand addition word problems, okay? Not solve them, right? They still have to have a strategy for addition, but it's gonna help them draw out and understand what's happening in the word problem. Thank so you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate it. We know there's lots of different options uh, for teaching and learning about math on YouTube. We love that you spent your time with Instruct Beats. Instruct Beats. Please check us out on all our social media accounts at Instruct Beats. We'd love for you to hit that subscribe button, subscribe and leave a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Thanks again. Instruct the beats. Out.